Hey dudes, and welcome back to The Bance. As always, I am your host, The Bance. And once again, it is time for our best of the month as far as what's happening in fashion goes. This time, of course, for the month of February. So with all that said, let's just jump right into it. And as always, first up, we have our art stories for the month. And for our first art story of the month, and definitely, definitely the most surprising to me by far, mainly because I hadn't heard of this artist before now, and I really feel bad that I didn't. But artist Inti showed off some of his newest works for his newest gallery showing in Paris, and words can't even describe how nice this stuff is, how absolutely mind-blowing this stuff is. The absolute amount of agonizing detail that is in each one of these paintings is just stunning. The detail of the characters, the details of the patterns, the choice of colors, the choice of just styles and influences, and Honestly, from a fashion perspective, the best way I can describe this is if Dries Van Noten ever decided to become a painter, I would assume he'd be doing stuff like this, because it's just absolutely gorgeous. So with that said, if there is only one art show, art gallery, art exhibit that you should look at photos of from this month, it's, it's definitely this one. Then artist Remed showed off some of his newest paintings for his newest gallery showing, and I couldn't just be a sucker for this one. As somebody that just considers themselves for a sucker for the more simple parts of art, this just checks all of my boxes. I mean, you have very nice simple geographic patterns that make even nicer patterned figures and paintings overall. The aesthetic that comes from this Mondrian-esque color scheme that he chooses to go with. It's just so simple and clean and fun and bright and vibrant and honestly I just can't get enough of it and I don't think you would either. And lastly and at an absolute no surprise to anyone, Takashi Murakami's new exhibit The Octopus Eating Its Own Leg. I mean what else is there really to say? It's Takashi Murakami, one of the gods of pop art currently and pretty much all time. Like, there's nothing bad to say about it, and this collection is just great too. It's got classic pieces, it's got renowned pieces, it's got some even insane new pieces, especially some of the octopus sculptures. Really worth checking out, and honestly, if you have a chance to go, I definitely would go, or at the very least, if you're not a fan of Murakami or know much about Murakami, this is a great place to start. Alright, and then moving on into fashion, and as per usual, there were a lot of very nice showings this month. And first and foremost, obviously, I have to talk about the Montclair Genius Collaboration lines. Obviously, the idea of collaboration is nothing new in fashion. It's been done pretty much forever. And even though certain brands will highlight different collaborations throughout the time of the year, seeing a brand do this many collaborations at once for something that isn't a special edition or an anniversary or anything along those lines, it's pretty mind-blowing, in fact. And the fact that they chose some of the people that they did to make some pieces that are just absolutely stunning and outside the box and still wearable, like even for being like with Montclair styling or Montclair flair, like just, it's just so great. And the fact that they went with so many different designers too, I mean, you have all the Advent Guard pieces, you have all the very stylish maximalist pieces, you have the very nice texturally savvy monochrome pieces, and you even have just the unfortunately not that great streetwear, but it's still there, and at least some of it's still interesting. Like, not enough props can be given to them, and I'd really like to see other people, other companies, at least attempt something similar to this, because if they can do this, me and Montclair can do this, and make just these incredibly insane pieces, I can only imagine what even more stylish, even more fascinating fashion houses could possibly do. 
Then up next, we have a slew of Japanese streetwear brands. So I'm going to just cover each one very quickly, very briefly, because most of these brands are pretty consistent overall. First up, and really a surprise to no one, we have the Neighborhood and Adidas collaboration. Obviously, they've done stuff like this before, and in all honesty, I can't ever really think of a bad Adidas Neighborhood collaboration. I can think of other bad Adidas collaborations, and I can think of other bad Neighborhood collaborations, but when the two come together, they're almost always flawless at executing it. I mean, there's a bunch of different pieces, and they're all very interesting. The graphics are on point and clean as per usual. They're not overly gaudy, they're not overly saturated, their placement on the pieces is very nice. And as always, the different silhouettes they chose to use here for the clothing themselves. Always interesting choice of fabrics, choice of designs, just nice overall. Then we had Fundamental, and once again, what is there to say? Just fundamental is just usually just so consistently good with what they do and they just continue along this line here. The only reason I'm really including them as opposed to why I wouldn't is because a couple of the pieces here are definitely a little bit more interesting than usual. Like usually fundamental tends to stay on the more clean side of things not necessarily as contemporary as Remy Relief, not necessarily as crazy and borrow as Capital, but they did definitely stretch their wings a little bit here, and I do just have to give them props for that, because it does show that even though they are masters of patchwork, it's not just in one design style. And then lastly, of course, we have Human Made, because what kind of consistently clean, nice design list from Japanese streetwear could be included without at least mentioning the god himself. But in all honesty, you really do have to give it up to Nigo here. I mean, in this time of streetwear that we're in, where everything either needs to be just super edgy, or philosophical in some sense, or has to have some ulterior meaning or motive, or too deep for you bullshit, really. Nigo is just Nigo, and he just likes to have fun, make fun designs, make clean things, make dirty things, make things that he enjoys wearing, doesn't matter how loud or simple they are. And whether he's doing it at Bape, or Uniqlo, or here really, it just turns out well. You can definitely see his influence, you can definitely see his creative design, and it's really nice to just see something in streetwear that's a little bit more lighthearted even if it isn't there anymore, really. And on the note of Japanese streetwear, there is actually one more company I did want to cover, and that is Radial. For those of you not really familiar with the company, basically, definitely on the newer side, only been around a couple years now, but the reason I wanted to highlight them here is mainly just because it was just really kind of refreshing to see, I guess. I think one thing that a lot of not necessarily American streetwear companies, but a lot of streetwear companies in general have had a really hard time doing is finding this idea of adult streetwear. Basically this kind of mid-transition, somewhere between like streetwear and contemporary menswear, something for somebody that is looking for a little bit of an older, more mature look, that's maybe not as graphic heavy, that's maybe not as edgy, pretentious, just something nice, something clean, something colorful, maybe a pattern here or there. Something that can be worn with something a little bit more mature and not be laughed at. And I do think there are a few companies out there that are doing that very well. Obviously like Wacko Marie is doing a great job with that. I do think that Palace, even for as being as loud as it is, does a little bit of that as well. And here I think Radial takes it in stride as well too. When I talked about them previously, I did mention exactly how many colors, how many patterns, how many different designs were in this lookbook, and honestly, just going back to it, it's just as fun and vibrant and playful and colorful as it was back then. I mean, in all honesty, if you're into maximalism, but aren't really interested in wearing it, Maybe you're just more interested in wearing vibrant colors, or maybe like the occasional nice pattern, nice plaid, something like that, maybe like a dip dye or something. This is a fantastic lookbook. It's definitely not mind-blowingly amazing. It's definitely not like a runway show in Paris or Milan quality, but 
not all fashion has to be that. Maybe it just has to be something that's interesting, maybe something that's fun. And I think Radial absolutely kills that idea here. All right, and then moving on from the Japanese and the streetwear side of things, next up I did have to give a shout out to No Union and their newest lookbook. Honestly, if you're into design for whatever reason as far as fashion goes or the more technical aspects of fashion, this is at the very least worth a look over. When I look at this lookbook, it's very interesting to me. It almost feels like when you see somebody design something on a sketch pad and throw a bunch of ideas on it and then, you know, taking those ideas but then taking out certain aspects and making like this idea here or this idea there, whether it be like, oh, let's do an asymmetrical stitch here. Oh, let's put a graphic here. It's like they took all those ideas that were on the sketch pad on the single piece and actually brought them to life. It's not something you see every day, seeing something as crazy as this. And although it's not necessarily always wearable, the fact that a lot of it is still wearable in a certain type of day situation, you have to at least give them props for that. Aside from that, some really, really nice deconstructed pieces here, and some really nice design elements too. As always, I do have to give props to anybody that tries to do some hybrid of two different aesthetics or more, and there's plenty of that here, believe me. So once again, if you're interested more in the design side, the technical side of fashion, definitely worth a look. Then in our only techwear showing for the month, and truthfully in what I would consider my most debatable choice of the month, we have Eleven by BBS Boris Bijan Saberi himself. Now if you're wondering why I did choose to include him on this list or didn't choose to include him on this list, the reason being is because when it comes down to it, BBS, I'm still not really a fan of his streetwear aesthetics, whether you want to call them regular streetwear, luxury streetwear, athletic streetwear, whatever. It just doesn't really ring true to me. I don't think the ideas are necessarily on point. I don't think the price is anywhere near where it should be. And yeah, I still think that he should really stay away from it. But even with all that said, everything else about this lookbook just totally props him up to being the god of tech that he really is. I mean, his tech wear pieces are just so on point all the time. They're just so good, they're so wearable, without looking overly saturated in tech ideas. They're slimming, the silhouettes are nice, like I just can't get enough of them. And even for as much as I don't like his streetwear, good fucking God, can this guy make a graphic? I mean, even if there wasn't any good tech in this lookbook, even though that's pretty hard because it is BBS, but even if there wasn't any good tech in this look, like, just based on his graphics alone, that enough would put this in the best of the month, really. Even if you're not the most artistic type of person or appreciative of that sort of thing, I would still, at the very least, give this lookbook a look just for the graphics alone. It's so inspirational to see what he can do and what's actually possible on that front. And lastly, and definitely not least, I had to include this one. It's just too good, and that is a lookbook from I Nominit. It's just... <sighs> well, let's just get into it. Now, you may have heard a little bit about this brand in the past. They are still on the relatively new side. I think they've only been around for like two, maybe three years. And in all honesty, even if you go look at their site right now, it's not really the most exciting, interesting stuff, especially for its price point. But that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about next season, about Lookbook Fall Winter 2018. And holy fuck is the maximalism here so on point. The use of different patterns, the use of different materials, the use of different textures, the use of different embroideries, the use of different sewing, graphics, designs, silhouettes, everything is so different and so special and so detailed and why the fuck did you use Luke Sabat to fucking model this shit? It's so much better than that. Like, what the 
fuck is wrong with you? But even my own little stupid rant aside, if you are a fan of really what can be done as far as experimental maximalist menswear that is actually day-to-day -day wearable, I would highly, highly recommend looking into this lookbook. And I am very excited to see what's coming next for them. Bravo. Like, absolutely great job. All right, and lastly, let's move on to our articles of the month. And of course, first up, we have to include another grail piece, this time on the master of patchwork himself, Junior Watsonabe. If you're not familiar with the man, I definitely, definitely think that you should be, and definitely think you should read this article as well. Very in-depth, very insightful, and if you're not interested or completely new to his world, it's definitely eye-opening. Then, and although not necessarily the most interesting article itself, the idea behind it is very important, and that is Fashionista's small little piece on this idea of what the fashion bundle is. And basically, it goes into a little bit of the history behind it, who's starting to do it now, and really, from a business perspective, fashion perspective, buyer perspective, whatever you actually are as far as fashion is related, this may affect you in some way. So I definitely think you should at least get a knowledge of it going into what could possibly happen in the future and help maybe prevent it if you're on the more inner working side of it as well. Definitely a debatable, controversial piece and definitely worth a look. Then Quartzy put out a fantastic article on why black is black and is and always will be the new black. Basically, a nice cultural slash historical look at why black has always been used in fashion, what its use is in fashion, and just a lot of information on black and black fashion as far as the color black. In all honesty, it's a really great piece, especially from a historical point of view, from a design perspective. It doesn't matter. In the end, if you're going to be wearing or doing fashion, you're going to be using black at some point, and this is a great way to learn about it. Then Bloomberg put out a very strongly titled piece called The Death of Clothing, and they basically go into a lot of the different reasons around why clothing is dying, retailers are dying, and they go into a lot of very in-depth graphs and articles, and Really, it's kind of eye-opening if you didn't already know about it, and maybe if you did, you didn't know as much as they're willing to talk about. So, if you're interested in the economic side of fashion, especially if you're trying to get into the industry, this is definitely worth a read. It's very important to see where the future of fashion is headed. And lastly, and probably the most interesting article this month, is Rack's piece titled, East Africa Doesn't Want Your Hand-Me-Downs. And basically, to summarize the article, it's just going into a lot of the clothing problems that are going on in East Africa right now. Whether it be hand-me-downs from the US and other first world countries, or the influx of Chinese factories building their own stuff there and trying to undercut and undersource the native population to sell their own cheap goods. And then the general population's attempt at trying to bring back its own cultural goods. Very interesting from a socio aspect, from an economic aspect, and it's really nice to see a more in depth look at something that's not coming out of, you know, Asia or Europe or America. So, yeah, if you're interested in that sort of thing, definitely worth the read here. All right, guys, and that wraps up our What's Happening in Fashion Best of the Month of February. As I said in the last Best of the Month, I understand if you're not able to follow through on all of the what's happening in fashions, the whiffs from day to day, week to week, but if there is a select list that you should look at, it's definitely this one here. And as per usual, if you do want to read the articles I talked about today or take a look at a little bit more of the images than what I posted, I've linked all the articles down in the description below, so definitely take a look at those. And as always, guys, I do want to thank you for watching these videos and supporting my content. If you do have any questions, comments, concerns, or do want to talk fashion or anything else in general, feel free to hit me up in the comments. I am always willing to talk fashion. And with that, guys, 
Thank you once again. Have a good rest of your weekend, and as always, until next time.